All right, g'day guys. So gonna talk a little bit today about visual setups here. So obviously I mainly do astrophotography and my channel's mainly focused on astrophotography. But over these last few months, I've been focusing a lot more on doing some visual astronomy as well, using my eyes, um, using eyepieces. There really is, it really is a different experience using, you know, using your eyes as opposed to, um, you know, astrophotography where we're collecting lots and lots of, um, lots and lots of data over usually quite a long period of time. Um, so what I thought I'd do is, uh, you know, look at my two, my two setups here that I'm currently using for my, um, my visual setups anyway, um, and just talk about how you might get started with visual, how I've got back into it. I guess in some ways I consider myself quite a beginner when it comes to visual astronomy, just because I've been doing so much astrophotography over the last few years. Um, and yeah, I mean, I guess that brings me to my first point in terms of why I've been sort of going back to visual. So firstly, the weather's not been great down here in Australia. We've had lots and lots of clouds, so it's been difficult to get time. And you know, part of that is that when you're doing a bit of visual astronomy, it's so much quicker to just chuck a mount outside, put a telescope on it. You don't need any electronics sometimes, depending on what your setup is, um, and just get looking. You know, put an eyepiece on and start looking at things. So especially when you've only got small gaps in the weather, I think that visual, you know, visual setups can be so good. Now, there's different things to look at. I've obviously got two different mounts here. I've got a manual mount. I've got a, um, an equatorial computerized go-to mount here. Um, I've got some binoculars. Um, I've got a few eyepieces. Um, yeah, and there's a couple of different telescope, types of telescopes here as well. So in case you're an absolute beginner, um, I'll just look at like a couple of the different mounts and telescope types. So you can just get a, a, a brief overview here first. So a manual mount like this is a very basic, um, it's a very basic mount, no computerized um, electronics in this at all. Basically it's just, it's gonna go left, right, it's gonna go up and down like this, and you're gonna put your telescope in there and you're manually gonna to go to the objects that you're interested in. Um, you know, often people will start with the moon and then they'll go to maybe bigger objects in the sky like Orion, things that are a bit easier to find. But these can be really good because they don't weigh a lot. They don't weigh a lot um, and they can be really quick and easy, you know, to set up and you don't need to worry about power with them as well. So, you know, for learning the night sky, these can be really good. This, of course, is a, um, a computerized go-to uh, mount, an equatorial go-to mount. So the advantages with this, obviously, it's gonna, it does weigh a bit more, but the advantage is that this comes with a hand controller and you can actually tell the mount where you want to go in the night sky once you've, once you've gone through the process of aligning the mount. So, couple of different mount types there. The same thing goes with telescopes. There's lots of different types of telescopes. They're gonna involve either mirrors, they're gonna involve um, glass, or sometimes they involve a combination of those two things, glass and mirrors. But there's lots of um, different designs of telescopes. The main, the main types of telescopes you're gonna get are telescopes like this, which is a refractor telescope, which is basically just glass elements inside of it. Very sort of traditional, you know, idea of what you imagine a telescope sort of to be and often recommended for beginners because they're not, they're not particularly complicated. However, these can be quite expensive depending on what type of refractor you're gonna get. Um, then there can be telescopes like this, which is a Schmidt Cassegrain, sorry, which is a which is a Maxitov Cassegrain. Better get the right kind of Cassegrain there. Um, these telescopes involve um, mirrors and glass. Um, this type of telescope has a very long focal length, so this is very good for getting close, very close into objects. Um, another type of telescope, very similar to this, is a Schmidt Cassegrain, 
which again uses a combination of um, mirrors and, uh, and glass in it as well. Um, the last telescope is a, um, a Newtonian telescope, which basically just uses um, mirrors. Um, often those telescopes are fairly cheap to produce and um, the difference with um, telescopes like the Newtonian design is often that the eyepiece is on the side of the telescope at the front whereas you'll notice with these telescopes the eyepiece is usually um, at the back on a refractor or a schmidt cassegrain The point is there that's a lot of information I know, but the point is there. there's a lot of different designs of, of telescopes and it can be a bit overwhelming um, when, you want to, when you want to get started in astronomy. Now, I'll probably st let's start with this one because I think this is the easiest setup and one of the best, arguably one of the best ways to get started. So this is a Skywatcher AZ-5. So this is a fully manual mount. Um, I've only had this for about two months. I've used it now about probably about eight times, 10 times, something like that. And I got this because I was looking for a quick grab and go mount if I wanted to look at things like the moon or the Orion Nebula or things that I knew I could easily find. So a mount like this is ideal for something like this, which is a 80 millimeter refractor. Um, you could probably put something you could probably possibly put something heavier than that onto this mount, but I think this is quite a nice match. So all you're gonna do, this telescope comes with a bar on the bottom, which is called a Vixen bar. So that's this bar that's attached to the bottom of the telescope. That's gonna go into the mount here and you just tighten that down. So that's now fixed in place. And basically all I'm doing from here is I am physically myself slewing the mount to whatever it is I want to look at in the night sky. And obviously I'm gonna use my finder scope. So this is a small scope attached to your main scope, which is a much lower focal length, so much more zoomed out view. And I'm gonna use this to find my object to get an approximate um, position on my object and then I'm going to look to look at the object through the main eyepiece here. So obviously this little finder telescope here needs to be aligned with your main scope. Usually you'll do that during the day on a faraway object or you can do it at night um, you know, on something like the moon or something that you, you know particularly well. But you can see the ease of a setup like this if you just want to get going. This is so quick. In fact, you can you know, easily lift the whole thing and just plonk it down and get observing. And that's the advantage of these kind of visual setups. You know, for somebody, for somebody like me that does a lot of astrophotography, um, there's that investment in time and you do need, you do, you need large, um, you need large um, time periods where the sky is going to be clear so you can take lots of those images. A visual setup like this, you know, like I said, you could just plonk this down, put your eyepiece in and off you go, looking at whatever it is, you know, that you're interested in. Now, obviously looking at things like deep sky objects, um, you know, there's a galaxy here behind me and on the other wall, I've got things like the Carina Nebula in Orion you're not obviously going to see what you see on a picture through one of these because they're, that's long exposure astrophotography. But that, that doesn't mean that, um, you know, that doesn't diminish the value of looking at something with your own eyes. It's a very different type of experience. And um, even if, you know, even if those deep sky objects like the Orion Nebula only look like kind of bits of sort of... Um, blurred dust in the sky, there's still something very special about looking at it with your, with your own eyes. And when you get into things like, um, obviously the moon's going to look fantastic through one of these. Um, and also those things like globular clusters look quite good. Um, star clusters, you know, you get to see the different colours in the stars. So there's a hell of a lot that you can do to get started with something like this which is just a, like I said, this is a 600 millimeter Skywatcher ED80. 
you can actually pick these up second hand at really good prices that's a whole other subject but if you're willing to look around second hand you can save an enormous amount off off of um, off of telescopes so this is like i said 600 millimeter it's a great way to start looking at the night sky it's not too zoomed in it's a good way to sort of find your way around um, there's obviously the binoculars now for me personally this is how i kind of got back into visual astronomy so if you don't have a telescope and you want to get started a half decent pair of binoculars is actually a lot better than a really really cheap telescope like from a department store so if you've got a pair of binoculars in your house or your dad's got a pair or your mum's got a pair then go and grab those and when you get a clear night whether it's the moon or some stars um, just start um, trying to find your way around the sky now there's a few ways to do that obviously if you're going into this as a complete beginner and you don't know what your way around the sky at all there's applications on your phone so there are things like um, Stellarium and Sky, sky Safari different um, applications that you can use on your phone but there's also these things which are planospheres and these are actually really good as well because you just dial in you just dial in your date and your time and it will let you know where the stars are in the sky so these can be a really good way to orientate yourself and get used to finding your way around constellations they're very cheap very affordable they don't need any batteries <laughs> unlike a phone and these can just be a, a good reference to have in your back pocket if you need it so you know part of the fun of that is obviously even if you've got an app on your phone it can be trying to work out where a particular object is and then trying to find your way to it using your telescope and that can actually be a hell of a lot of um, that can be a lot of fun um, so yeah I mean th this is a I think this is a really good example here of something that could start you off for uh, visual astronomy um, you know a, a good solid al azimuth mount like this and um, you know a half decent telescope on it that, that could be a great way to start and like I said if you can get something second hand as well that's fantastic um, because you can save a hell of a lot of money um, just in terms of eyepieces um, a lot of these telescopes will come with things like diagonals and an eyepieces sometimes they come with two higher powered eyepieces so I would recommend something in the level of like 25 28 millimeter um, as an all-around eyepiece to get you started okay so moving across here we've got a computerized mount so the, the big difference obviously in these two obviously this is going to cost more it weighs more but it's also got motors in it and you can control the whole thing electronically so the big advantage of this especially when you get up to these higher focal lengths so finding your way around the night sky with something that's 600 mil might not be too bad but once you get up to something like this which is 1500 millimeters so really zoomed in it can be um, it's a lot easier using a go-to mount and the way this works is basically you switch the mount on obviously you're going to need power you switch the mount on you're going to align the mount to two or three stars so you go through a process of where the mount will try and slew to a star you'll center that you'll press ok it'll go to the next star and then it starts to the mount itself will know where it is in the sky now that process that star align process the first second third time you do it it might take you a while but after you get used to the main stars that you're interested in the bright stars in the sky you can do it definitely in under 15 minutes easily um, and then the advantage of that is then you can use this hand controller to give you a um, you can use the hand controller to basically for it to do a few things you can either go to an object yourself by typing in the catalog number of that object so all the objects in the night sky will have a sort of a catalog number to them whether it's a Messier catalog number or an NGC number so you can type that number in and the telescope will go to that object for you or you can use the tour button here on this SynScan controller and what that will do is it will give you a tour of the night sky so it will take you around the popular objects and you can choose obviously once you've looked at one object you can choose to go on to the next one you can skip it if you're not interested in it and you can just 
basically cycle through the objects until you go to things you're interested in. And I used this a couple of weeks back and I went around about 15, 16 objects in about an hour. Now, some of them weren't that interesting, but some of them were really interesting. So, you know, that's a real fun way to start to understand where things are in the night sky. And um, of course, you know, th that's where the computerized mount with a hand controller like this really, really does help a lot. Um, obviously, like I said, this is a lot more expensive than a manual mount, but, um, but it's got a lot of um, advantages. And like I said, this sort of telescope here, very different focal length. So if you're looking at getting into visual, um, visual astronomy, then, um, you know, as a beginner, you would definitely want to sort of, I think, edge towards something which is a little bit wider focal length. Um, and then maybe further down the track when you want to get close into objects. So this type of telescope is great for looking at the planets, the moon, getting in close on things, um, something like this. So that, you know, as you get further into the hobby, you'll often get one telescope to complement another telescope. And you might, like me, end up with a bunch of, <laughs> a bunch of different telescopes. Um, but yeah, they've all got their own place depending on what it is you're interested um, in looking at. Um, like I said, the other thing is just eyepieces. So I would recommend going with something like this Barda Hyperion. This is a 24 millimeter eyepiece. Um, again, fairly wide, not too expensive. Um, and it's gonna have, you're gonna tend to find that things like this 24 mil 25, 28 mil, whatever it, whatever it is, they're the kind of eyepieces you're often gonna pick up the most because you get that nice wider field of view. Then I've got a 13 millimeter eyepiece. So again, if I wanna get in even closer to an object, so for example, if planetary season's up, I might use this little Maxitov here and I might put in the 13 millimeter to get in nice and close on those, um, on those planets. So, you don't actually need many eyepieces to get you started. I'd recommend something like a 25 and a 13, something around there. And you can see tons of stuff in the night sky with just those two, just those two eyepieces. So look, um, there's a couple of options there for getting, getting started into visual astronomy. I do think I do think there's a lot to be gained from um, looking at the night sky with your own eyes and engaging, engaging your own um, imagination. Um, and it's a great way to complement uh, astrophotography as well. I do highly recommend if you can get things off the second-hand market, you, you can definitely save a lot of money. If you can join your local astronomy club, they can give you a lot of advice on where to begin. And often they will even have Astronomy clubs these days will even have rental uh, rental telescopes that you can um, take home for a week or two. So that's a, that's another option to get you started and see if you're actually interested in the hobby. Um, but that's a, this is just a couple of options and um, hopefully I've explained some of the reasons to get out there and um, have a look at the night sky. So um, why not grab those binoculars tonight? And if it's clear, go out and um, go out and see what you can see, because there's lots of surprises out there. And without further ado, um, I will say goodbye and I'll see you on the next video. So thanks a lot, guys.